Inflation has a lot of families looking at ways to cut back on their spending. But when it comes to our survival necessities, that's easier said than done. So this afternoon, we're going in depth on rising grocery prices and some of the factors causing them to rise faster than other parts of the economy. So let's start with an overview of this issue. The food price index, which measures the cost of all food we eat, increased by more than 11% in the last year. The food at home index, which measures only grocery costs, rose even more, 13.5%. Both are now at their highest level since May 1979. Now for some context, let's break down the cost of some common grocery items. Eggs, for example, saw a massive price increase of nearly 40% over the last year. Butter and flour prices both rose nearly 25%, while milk and bread both jumped around 17%. Now, amazingly, things could be a whole lot worse due, the, due to that potential massive rail strike. But this morning, President Biden announced a tentative deal between a rail workers union and rail companies. Economists we spoke with say that agreement will avert devastating economic consequences. We already are having supply chain mismanagement problems. Okay. And when the railroad uh, do not work, the things are going to get worse. Digging deeper into food costs, Colorado farmers say it's not just more expensive to transport food, it's also costing them more to grow it. That's because the cost of a common fertilizer hit a record high earlier this year. Natalie Chuck continues our in-depth coverage. Tomatoes in Chile are my favorite. Eric Hannigan's family has been growing crops in La Junta for 100 years. You see the like the romance and the pride, you know, of farmers, you know, they're tilling their soil, they're producing an abundant, abundant crop. And you think, I want that. But some of that is being lost right now. The romance of it all is running low, while fertilizer prices run high. Our prices have skyrocketed and availability is it's hard to get. And it's not any easier for the middleman. Here we're doing corn and alfalfa. President and CEO of Jetstream Ag Aviation, Sam Rogge, has been in the crop dusting business for about 20 years. He says the last year or so has felt like a juggling act. I would call to uh, order fertilizer and it was difficult to give any individual farmer a quote as it would go up in price while you're on the phone. As of March, the cost of a common fertilizer, DAP, had hit a new record high, about $50 more than the previous high in 2008. And Viragi, relaying the prices to farmers isn't always easy. Sticker shock. It's like, wow, how are we going to survive this? You know, our revenues are way, way down. We're, fit, we're running 50% of our sales because farmers are affected by the drought. They're affected by the fertilizer and fuel prices. And the people who are going to pay the price are right here at the grocery stores. Consumers will definitely have to bear the brunt of it because uh, if farmers can't stay economically feasible, then we got to get our food for somewhere anyway. Now, the cost of fertilizer has started to go down in recent months, slowly but surely, but farmers here in Pueblo County say it really doesn't matter anymore. They've hit the harvest season, and the damage from earlier this year is already done. So looking ahead, what can you do to reduce your food costs? Well, CNBC suggests following sales to get the lowest prices. You can also save if you plan your meals and buy only what you need. Buy in bulk at a warehouse store like Costco or Sam's Club. Use a cash bag app like Denver-based Ibotta and pay for your shopping using a credit card with bonus cash back on grocery purchases.